الحمد لله وكفى وسلاما على عباده الذين اصطفى ما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس انتم الفقراء الى الله سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد المبارك وسلم The topic that you have chosen for today dilemmas of muslim youth in turbulent times it's a very wide topic it's a very open topic i'm going to take the liberty to present this topic in my own way and i'm going to suggest to you that actually that the times are not really what is turbulent it is the state of our heart that is turbulent and we have been in this state of turbulence for a very long period of time the recent events in your country are just a what we call like a drop in an ocean and it's amazing that how is it that we were able to ignore the ocean and now we're only beginning to feel the drops and that is what i personally feel is the biggest dilemma of contemporary times that we are faced with a dual type of ghaflat that on the one hand we were so heedless and unaware that we allowed ourselves to reach such a low level of iman that we are facing the consequences of that today and second type of ghaflat is now that the consequences are coming upon us we remain ghafil even more ghafil about the weak and fragile state of our iman and instead we are constantly focusing on the quote unquote halat and you go to anyone and everyone in this country at this moment and everybody is saying that halat bahut kharab hai aur hum bahut pareshan hai halat ke bare mein right and what do people do what is their response to this their response is to stare at a screen and watch people do tafsir on the halat for hour after hour then to turn the screen off and turn and look at one another and do tafsir with one another on the tafsir this is what we call tafsir ala tafsir <laughs> you are supposed to become nur ala nur but instead you become tafsir ala tafsir now you want me to come in and do tafsir ala tafsir ala tafsir Well, I am going to do Noor al-Noor al-Noor. Nice Sunday. This opening part was for the organizers. <laughs> the rest is for the organizers plus the audience. All right? Uh, it's a big mistake. If you think about it, just even if you use your uncle, in the past one month, probably 80% of this country at least has been listening radio or watching TV or reading newspapers and discussing with one another for at least 2 to 3 hours a day. How many hours would that make? You're a country of about 150 million people. If you add that up, even in one month, we're talking about probably hundreds of thousands or millions of hours that were spent on this tafsir that did not even bring you one inch closer to a solution. Imagine if all these so many people in this country spent those millions of hours on du'a to Allah subhanahu wa taala, on reflecting on the state of their heart. on making toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on fixing their own inner sorry state of affairs your whole country would be set by now it just would have taken one month the dilemma of a muslim young man or woman in this time is that he or she falls prey to ghaflat so I read an ayah of the Quran al-Karim in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned what a person should not do in these times ولا تهنوا ولا تحزنوا وانتم الاعلون ان كنتم مؤمنين ولا تهنوا do not become lazy do not have apathy do not become disinterested the complete opposite of what we do ولا تحزنوا don't have huzn do not despair do not worry do not be pereshan allah ta'ala is saying in the quran not be pereshan la tahzanu wa antum al a'lam because you will triumph in kuntum mu'minin if you can make yourselves true believers one thing is nafs iman that's entry level iman that's like admissions into idea and one thing is kamil iman that is like deans list graduating with honors in idea right from there is it sufficient to just enter this place <laughs> and to have your name and be assigned a roll number and then not do anything 
Do you think if you were to get admission into this place and not do a single thing for four years, you would ever graduate? No way. Even to get a little BBA degree from IBA, right, you're going to have to do four years of lectures, readings, coursework, exams, quizzes, assignments. Paul, a minute. So how much effort do you think it's going to take to get Imani Kama inside our hearts? It's going to take a lot of effort. Now, our real dilemma is why is it that we can't do that effort? What is keeping us from that effort? So, I personally view the dilemma of the youth as one of what in English we call an identity crisis. The Muslim youth in contemporary times are undergoing a deep identity crisis. Now, I use this word because what is a person's identity? Identity means what is a person's asal. What is a person's hakika? What is a person's self-understanding of themselves? If I was to ask you the question, who am I? Not about me, I would ask you to ask yourselves this question, who am I? So that's the question, that question is, what would you put in that box? What would you put in this box? So I write on the board, who am I? The question is, who do you think you are? The problem is that you do not have the right answer to this question. If I ask you this question, or if you were to think how I would answer it, you would say, he will say, I'm a professor, I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm this, I'm that. We don't even have a core understanding or concept of what our Islamic, Quranic identity is. So I want you to look in the Quran of I'm going to show you two ayat of the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines human identity. We don't even talk about a mu'min. Forget who is a mu'min and who is a Muslim. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Who is an insan? That is how far astray we are. We don't even have the insani concept that Allah has mentioned in Quran. That was the verse I recited to you in the beginning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Ya ayyuhan nas, that all, all of humanity, antumul fuqara'u ilallah, that each and every one of you is a fakir. That is your real identity. Fakir means that you are muhtaj. You are dependent. That you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are absolutely needy. Absolutely dependent on Him. Now how many of you were thinking that when I said, Who am I? How many of you were thinking that, May to Allah ka fakiru. How many of the women were thinking in their heart, May to Allah ki fakir niyu. We have lost that need. We are content leading an Allah-free life. Our lives are speaking. We say in English, right? Actions speak louder than words. You don't have to say it with your tongue. Your whole lifestyle is screaming that I don't need Allah. I don't need to remember Allah. I don't need to love Allah. I don't need to follow Rasulullah. I don't need to read Kitabullah. If you don't do anything, then what it means is I don't need to be Allah. I'm not a fakir. I don't need Allah. Why do these mobiles always say that namaz, paro, zikr, karo, yeah, about that? I don't need these things. Look like this, act like that, make your heart like this, change your behavior, change your characteristics, change everything, your zahir, your batin. I don't need that. We have lost this core human attribute of need. Have you seen a person who is a fakir, a real fakir? Right? In this world, muhtaj. Unka chalna ka andaz muhtalaf hai. Unka bolna ka andaz muhtalaf hai. Unka chalna aur bolna jo hakiki fakir hai, wo to trap rahe hai. Unki hajat wo har har nazar se aapko nazar aati hai. We don't even walk like that. We don't act like that. We're self-confident, overconfident, arrogant people. We think we have istigna. And what do we think we are? We're mustaghni on Allah. We don't need Allah s.a.w. So you go to sleep at night. 80% of students won't even bother to set the alarm for Fajr. What does that mean? We're saying, Allah Ta'ala, I don't need this Fajr. I don't even need it. I'm not even going to bother setting the alarm. Because I don't need it. The 20% who try to get up, those days that they miss it, they wake up and they're perfectly fine. If you miss something that you need it, right? let's say you miss your final exam, <laughs> you need that for your degree. You missed that final exam, you oversleep through that final exam. Allahu Akbar. Aap apne professor ke saamne aisa toba karenge ki aapne Allah Ta'ala ke saamne kabhi aisa toba nahi ki. For missing fajr. So kya hai, bada gana se toba ta kar lete. Not for missing fajr. I don't need it, it's fine. What's so what if I missed it? I can break us up. 
I didn't need that. I didn't really need to pray on time. So I to come in alarm set. Yes, I was so happy. But I didn't have to pray. But I didn't have to pray. But I didn't have to pray. That's the best of us. <laughs> That's a few. Even this is a very small number now who set the alarm and if they miss it, actually pray. Many of us, if we miss it, we won't even bother to pray. We'll make it up some other day or just add it to the... <laughs> add it to the... Right? Add it to my card, as we say. Put it on my tab. Right? So many overview namazes that we already have. We don't need. We don't feel that need. Now, who is this need? Allah Ta'ala is saying is humanity. Right? They say in the West that know thyself. The deen of Islam says know Allah. When you know Allah, you will know yourself. The state and definition and understanding of human being is relative to Allah. You are a fakir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are needy. You need and you are absolutely dependent on Allah. You are fakir Allah. That is your real asl, your real hakikat. That has to be your self-conceptualization. You must act like that, think like that, walk like that, live like that. Then you'll be a human. That's insania. Humanity. We've lost that. Second attribute, Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran just for insan. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ What does it mean? Your second identity. Who am I? I'm an Ab. That's what I am. That's my real reality. Identity means that self-conception that overrules every other aspect of your personality. It means I... What you put in that box is, I am first and foremost a fakir, first and foremost an ab. What is ab? Not servant. Even slave can't capture this. The absolute slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what I am. I'm sold. That's what Allah says in Quran that I've purchased to believe in.